Hi, this is Kentucky Governor Matt Bevan. I want to start a dialogue with you. I want to start a conversation about something that is imperative, not only for Kentucky, but frankly, for America. The eyes of the world are on Kentucky right now because of the tragic events that have taken place at Marshall County High School. Another senseless killing, a student killing other students, walking into a school with a gun and taking their lives. And this creates understandably a whole lot of questions and a whole lot of conversation. It's important to remember two things. There is an ongoing investigation. That's the first thing. There's much we don't yet know. We're going to leave it to those professional investigators to figure out exactly what happened and ultimately we'll have that information. But number two, there's a healing process that hasn't even truly begun because the pain is still so immediate and visceral. That's going to be a process that's going to take place for days and weeks and months and years in that community. And I don't want to try to circumvent or get out in front of either one of those issues. But I will say this. We have a problem in America. And immediately what has often been the case is people think we need another regulation. We need another rule. I hear people talk immediately about gun control and somehow we need to take guns away from people. That somehow another gun restriction is going to be the answer. But I would submit to you that it's deeper than that. And we need to have an honest conversation with ourselves here in America. And let's make it specific to us here in Kentucky for right now, if that need to be the case. But we need to have an honest conversation about what really is at the heart of all this. Let's be honest, there's rules against a 15-year-old possessing a handgun. There's, there's rules against murder. There's laws against these types of assault. Anybody who's going to violate these laws was certainly not going to be prevented from doing the mayhem and, and the evil that was done by another regulation or another law. Evil doesn't care about laws. When people choose to break the law, they don't say, I'll break this one and this one, but not that one. The reality is we have a cultural problem in America. If you go back 200 years or even 100 years, there were far more guns per household in America than there are today. You would have been hard pressed in the history of this country not too far back to have found any home in America that didn't own at least one gun. You had children that used to bring even in my lifetime, and certainly generations ago, children that would bring their weapons to school. They would bring their guns to school sometimes leaving them in their vehicles, sometimes not, maybe stacking them outside the one-room schoolhouse or even in the memory of many of you watching this more recently than that. The fact of the matter is this is not a gun problem. That will be sacrilege to some, some will be offended at that idea, but the gun is not the problem. Do we need to be thoughtful and intentional about who has access to what and what that ultimately means? Of course, and there's no responsible gun owner who doesn't believe that but we have a cultural problem. The mores of America, and there will be many that will confuse that with morality, although morality is certainly part of it, but the mores that define who we are and what is or is not acceptable, what we do or don't tolerate, where we draw lines and where we put boundaries, these things have been changing and not for the better. You look at what's happening in popular culture. This is not a religious issue. There'll be the naysayers and the poo-pooers who immediately think, oh, you're going to talk about religion. I will tell you this, I'm going to talk about morality. Because if people don't believe they have responsibility to anyone other than themselves, that there is no pecking order of authority, that there is no absolute right and wrong, that everything is morally relative, when we live in that type of morally gelatinous state, we have a problem. Because individuals, young and old alike, don't assume that their actions matter in any kind of consequential way beyond that immediate moment. And that is a problem. And this is what's happening to our culture. We are crumbling from within. And we are seeing this throughout our society. We're seeing it in our classrooms. We're seeing it in our communities. And let's be honest, it starts in our homes. I am challenging everybody who has anything to do with what I'm about to say to take this to heart and let's start a conversation. 
Social media has become cancerous as it relates to the spreading of the types of things that lead to this. It has been an amazing blessing on many fronts. The ability for people to communicate, my ability to have this conversation with you right now, these are some of the things that are a benefit of social media. But it has led to an increasingly uh, sadistic and evil uh, and sinister use in a way that has created problems that we don't know the answers to. I don't, and I'm guessing no single person does, but we've got to be honest about the fact that these undercurrents exist, that cyberbullying and things of this sort exist. Whether that had anything to do with this instance or the next one or the one before it or whatever the case might be is not the point. The point is it does exist in America and it leads to tragedy after tragedy. Look at our popular culture, look at our movies. The violence, the disregard for the value of human life. We are becoming increasingly desensitized. Our young people are desensitized to it. We have a culture of death in America. We can pretend we don't. We can think that people can separate fact from fiction, from their lives, from that which they see. But if they are immersed in it at every turn, in television, in movies, in music, all of it. Listen to the lyrics of music today. It celebrates a culture of death. Not all of it, fair enough, but an amazing amount of it. And parents, I'm asking you to wake up and be aware of what it is that your children are listening to. To you young people, be mindful of what you put in because it becomes a part of your entire physiology, your entire mental makeup, it becomes a part of who you are. You are a, a, a creation of what you surround yourself by. Parents and others, I'm asking you to look at what kind of movies you go to see. For those of you that produce movies, I'm asking you, think about what you're feeding in. I know that we live in a day and age where we need to shock people more than the last time or they won't pay attention. In sensationalism, in, in, in the shock value, maybe gets people to pay attention to something, puts eyes on something, and you can make a buck, but at what price? It's robbing us of the very fabric of our nation and it's killing our young people. Watch the television shows. We glorify murder. We glorify killing. It has become increasingly explicit and we are desensitizing young people to the actual tragic reality and permanency of death. It's important for us to recognize this. Look at the video games that are played. Yes, they may be marked for mature audiences, but I'm telling you, those of you who make a dollar producing these movies and those of you who buy them and bring them into your homes, you know full well that many young people and old people are playing these games and becoming desensitized. When you get extra points and are encouraged to brutally kill people, and when the blood and the mayhem and the carnage is increasingly real, it desensitizes people. And it's we, a shock to us now that suddenly we are seeing a prevalence of and an increasing amount of this happening not in a video game, not on a television show, not in a movie, not in lyrics of a song, but in real life as young people act out that which they are surrounded by, that which they're immersed in. This is a cultural problem in America. And I'm asking, on the, I'm asking the people who produce this media, the people who produce this entertainment, I'm asking the people who profit from it, I'm asking for those of you who are executives in the social media ranks who, and I am a big believer in the Constitution of the United States and in our freedom of speech, but we have got to start to think about the filth, let's be honest, that is feeding through so many of the mediums, covered and protected by things that perhaps are not good for us, protected by a constitution that is good for us, but, but creating an end result that is not. What are those boundaries? I don't know. Should there be any? Should there be some content that is not given to us and to children without any kind of a filter or screen? These are conversations we need to have. It is a cultural problem. To the parents, I encourage you to be increasingly diligent. To young people, again, and to teachers and to coaches and to others of influence in their lives, be mindful of what is listened to. To those of you that play music over the intercom during the halftime of various sporting events, be mindful of what those lyrics are at every turn. 
Our culture is crumbling from within and the cost of it is high. The societal and emotional and psychological and moral cost is becoming more than our nation can bear. I have spent time with mothers and fathers who have lost children in tragic instances. And there is no ability, there are no words to describe the grief of a parent, the grief of a sibling, the grief of a friend, the grief of a a classmate, of a teacher, of a community who have lost someone that is an immediate part of their family or their community. Something has to be done. Let's start a dialogue. How exactly it forms, I don't know. But I'm calling on other governors. I'm calling on the President of the United States. I'm calling on our U.S. Congress. I'm calling on anyone who's in a position of influence, every superintendent, every CEO of every media company that produces a video game that is violent in its nature, the movie producers who make the movies, the record producers who produce the music that we listen to, all of you. We've got to step up. We're the adults. Let's act like it. Let's step forward. Let's start a conversation. And let's figure out how to try to repair this fabric of America that's getting shredded beyond recognition. Thank you.